Hello and welcome to this ISD VP tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to use ISD 2360 as an example to show you how to create an ISD trigger play project. First, I'll quickly go over the GPL trigger basics so you can gain better ideas on what is a GPL trigger and what needs to be done in your trigger play application. Then I'll work on a VP2360 project to show you how to create um, voice macros and more importantly, explain to you what are need to be configured in each of these voice macros so they can work together to handle a GPL trigger event. At last, I'll burn the device and play with it. So, this is my target. I'm going to use the ISD2360 demo board. After I burn the trigger play project into the device, I should be able to play it in the standalone mode. So I can press each of these six buttons to let the device play one, two, or three, four, five, six, respectively. Now, let's go over the trigger basics first. Um, let you know that ISD2360 device constantly detects edges on all GPIO pins, even in power down mode. So, if there is an edge, device knows it. Once an edge is detected, the device will compare it with its internal register setting to see if it causes a valid trigger. If it's a trigger, then the GPL associated voice macro will get invoked to run. Following this mechanism, your trigger play application basically needs to do two things. First, hardware-wise, it should be able to present an edge uh, when a button is pressed, for example. On the other hand, the device needs to be configured first so it can catch and handle the trigger event. Let you know that the device configuration should be done in power on initialization voice macro or POIVM. Now take a look at this application diagram. Let you know that our demo board follows this diagram. You can see once a button is pressed, the GPL pin level is dragged to ground. So naturally, you can think if the GPL pin level is originally configured at high, this button press event will cause a falling edge on that GPL pin. So, uh, so we can configure the device to catch this falling edge and then let this falling edge to trigger the device to play. Let's keep this in mind and work on our 2360 project. Now let's launch the 2360 VPE. Let's new a project. Choose a directory here. Demo. Um, type in 2360 trigger demo. Okay. Uh, then add a device macro. Let's add 10 wave files here. 1 to 10. And give it a while, and the VP is doing the compression. Okay, now voice prompts are ready. Let's go to the voice macro panel to edit the, the voice macros. You can see that the VP reserved three spots for this system voice macros. The first is the POI VM with index zero. Um, POI VM will get executed 
after system initial power on or after a reset condition. Uh, for this reason, I'm saying that uh, in your trigger application, POI is the only place for your device to configure itself at the beginning. Uh, PUVM will get executed only after the device received a power up command. So in our demo here, there's no MCU to issue SPI command, so PUVM is not relevant here. Wake up VM will get executed uh, if a trigger happened in power down mode. Uh, in other words, if a trigger wake up the device, then the device will first go to executed wake up VM, then go to executed GPL associated task VM. If the trigger happened in power up state, then the device will skip the wake up VM and jump to execute the task VM directly. Now, let's work on the POI VM. Um, remember, we want to configure the GPIO pins as initial high. For that, we want to um, configure the GPIO pins as input pre-enable and the pull high. Um, let you know that actually these values are the default reset value for the device. So you can actually skip this three register setting. Um, the reason I'm doing this here is to give you a complete picture. Then we want to configure the GPL pins as the falling edge trigger. So we want to configure O6 pins as falling edge trigger. So give 3F to the AF1 and uh, 0 to AF0. Um, you might be wondering why uh, or the how to find the values to be written into uh, these registers. For that, you can check the 2360 design guide. You can see here uh, register definition. Okay. Next, I'll uh, let you know that our 2360 is a three channel device. Uh, we have to assign the channel to each trigger, each pin at first. For that, there are two trigger channel select registers, uh, index 14 and 15. Let's take a, a look uh, in design guide now. 14, you can see this two bit are zero. Then we choose in channel zero for GPIO zero. Okay, this two bit defines the trigger channel for GPIO one. Okay, so if we want to uh, let GPIO 0 play in channel 0, GPIO 1 play in channel 1, and uh, GPIO 2 play in channel 2, and uh, GPIO 3 is 0 again. So the value could be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So it's 2, 4. So, for this value, GPL0 will be in channel 0. GPL1 trigger will be played in channel 1. GPL2 will be played in channel 2. And GPL3 will be played in channel 0 again. Next. Uh, so, for this one, the GPL45 will be played in 0. Okay, now at the end, we need to um, configure the, the task VM indexes. So for that, GPL0, we 
want to give it index 3 GPL 1 4 GPL 2 5 5 6 7 8 Now Now we can PD to finish the POI VM. Here we want to create tasks, task VMs. So this is VM GPIO0. This is GPIO1, GPIO2, GPIO3. GPIO 4, GPIO 5. Okay. Okay. Now, after the device is wake up, uh, we can do some common initialization here for all GPIO triggers. Uh, I can enable a playback path here. 44 so this enables the decoder and the PWM path um, maybe volume high then we can finish um, please be aware that for the wake up VM you should always end with finish um, otherwise your device will never be waked up by trigger event at the last, we want to add it to the task VM. This one, let's play one. Then you power down. This one is two. Three. Four. Five, six. Okay, now we configure the device in POI VM. Prepare the initial high state. Choose the channel. And uh, configure the GPR pins as the folding edge trigger pins. And uh, give signed the task VM indexes. Um, then in wake up VM. It will enable the playback pass and the task VM simply play a VP. Uh, we are good to go to make programming file now. And let's burn the device. All right, finished. I can now plug out the dangle board. Then plug in the power and the speaker to play with it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can operate it. So you can see I press button zero. One, two. The button five, button GPIO five. Six. GPIO four. Five. That's it. So far, I have showed you how to create an ISD2360 standalone trigger play project. The same method shown in this video also applies to ISDVP2100 and ISDVPE15100. At the end, I want to share with you one more thing. That is, if the GPIO trigger function is to be used with a microcontroller, 
actually you can only use one GPIO pin to control the device. So uh, to bring the voice feature in your application, only minimum resource is required from your system. For more details, you can check out this application note, even a chip called a one pin control implementation guide. Thank you for watching this video. If you have more questions, please feel free to send your questions to chipcorder at novatone.com.